Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. And today we're taking another look at yet another GPU from years gone by. This one isn't nearly as retro as some of the other ones we've looked at in the past. We're not looking at things like GTX 660s or anything like that that's quite frankly ancient architecture at this point compared to modern GPUs. Today we're actually looking at a more recent card and this is the RX 580 which comes back from 2017 and it's still a very popular 1080p gaming card today. So basically we're going to take a look at some more modern titles 2019 and 2020 and see if this thing is worth picking up if you're looking for a gaming PC in 2020. Is this something that you should consider especially if you're on a little bit more of a tight budget. Now, as we begin our dive into the RX 580, we are looking at the eight gigabyte version today. There was a four gigabyte option as well. This card was released in April of 2017 at an MSRP of $229 USD. And that puts it squarely in that sort of mid range graphics card area. And it was directly competing with Nvidia's GTX 1060, the six gigabyte versions. Now, possibly one of the biggest selling points for the RX 580 eight gigabyte version versus the GTX 1060. 66 gigabyte version is that we do have two extra gigs of VRAM. This is eight gigabytes of GDDR5 versus the GTX 1060's six gigabytes. And the idea was, of course, that while the cards may be very, very competitive and sort of trading blows at the time between the six gig 1060 and the eight gig 580, over the long run, as games start to take more and more advantage of more VRAM, the eight gigabyte cart might feature some of that patented AMD fine wine technology and actually get better with time relative to the 1060. Now the 580 had a TDP of 185 watts. So the vast majority of these 580 cards just have one eight pin PCIe power connector, but you can find some of the more premium options out there. I believe the Red Devil was one of these options that actually has an extra power connector as well. So you're gonna need at least an eight pin PCIe power connector, uh, unless you're getting maybe one of those OEM HP cards, those might still feature just the six pin connector, not 100% sure on on that I had one of the uh, OEM 580s I just don't remember off the top of my head whether it had that six or an eight pin connector but regardless just bear in mind you're most likely gonna need that one eight pin PCIe connector if you're putting this into an already existing system or you're building a system featuring this as your GPU now that being said this is not an overly hot card so even though my model is a couple years old now and even though it has a fan that sounds awful uh, sort of makes a clicking sound and even though it's never been opened up it still has its warranty stickers and everything on it so it is featuring the original tim overheating was absolutely not an issue and really as long as you have decent ventilation in your case the temperatures for rx 580s that have a solid cooler like this particular one with the dual fan design and just generally a beefier than needed cooler you're not going to have any issues with temperatures so with that being said we are going to jump into a couple of benchmarks here featuring some newer games that we're going to feature the same three that we've been featuring in recent videos also because we can then compare it to other graphics cards i've been putting on the test bench the test bench of course being a ryzen 1800x running at stock speeds we have 16 gigabytes of ddr4 memory running at 3000 megahertz in dual channel mode and the graphics card you're going to see in this uh, set of charts is going to be the rx 588 gigabyte version we have an rx 474 gigabyte version and then we have the gtx 970 cards now the rx 580s are are probably some of the more expensive cards out there right now among the three the GTX 970s are sort of all over the place the 470s are certainly the cheapest you can get an RX 588 gigabyte card for around $120 all day long on eBay and they are still available brand new on most of your uh, popular online websites like Amazon and I'll leave a link down below in case you want to check current pricing for a brand new one but uh, typically yeah they're gonna be a fairly good good budget option whether you're going new or used. So yeah, with all that being said, let's jump into the benchmarks and take a look at where the RX 580 8GB card falls in comparison to some of these other cards I've been looking at. Starting off with Metro Exodus on the normal preset, DirectX 12 and at 1080p, we see that the RX 580 is the front runner here, seeing an average frame rate of 64 over that magic 60 FPS mark and a 1% low there of 35, but we're not seeing huge gains over the likes of something like an RX 470 or the GTX 970 here. 
Moving on to Borderlands 3 is where the RX 580 8GB card actually starts to separate itself. Now obviously in the average FPS category, we're not seeing huge gains, especially over something like a GTX 970, but where this card really showed its strength is in the 1% and especially the 0.1% lows. We did not really see stuttering in the benchmark as it ran along, unlike the RX 470, which definitely had some pretty severe spikes in uh, sort of frame times, which led to that low 0.1% low. And even the GTX 970 did suffer a little bit from some of these spikes, and that's again why we see a lower 0.1% low. So the RX 580, even though in this title it doesn't have a huge advantage in the average frame rate, I would describe it as noticeably smoother than these other two cards. And in Red Dead Redemption 2, we actually see the RX 580 strengthen its lead here in all the categories across the board. We saw an average frame rate of 56 in the benchmark. We saw 47 on the 1% low and 44 on the 0.1% low. So even in the lowest 0.1% of frames here, we see the 580 beating the average frame rate of the 470 and GTX 970. And this is where we really see the 580 as just a better option than the GTX 970, which is going to be uh, reasonably close in price on the used market to the 580. So if you have the option here, uh, the 580 is definitely in most titles going to show its strength over the GTX 970. So there's no doubt based on the charts that the 580 is the best card of the cards that I took a look at. Obviously it's more power efficient than a GTX 970 and it gives you a significant performance uplift from an RX 470 4 gigabyte card. And the price frankly is right, especially if you're on the used market. $120 is kind of right around where you're gonna wanna pay for an RX 580. If you're willing to put in best offers or maybe bid on auctions, you might be able to get one a little bit cheaper than that. I don't think mine cost quite that much, but mine was bought in a different time back before uh, everything went downhill. So if the original question was to figure out whether or not the RX 580 8GB card is still up to snuff at 1080p in modern AAA titles in 2020, I think the answer is yes. We're at basically medium settings for all these games and we are hitting or at least getting very close to that 60 FPS mark. And of course, being at medium settings, we can always knock a few things down to really push us over the top of the 60 FPS mark. And with eight gigabytes of VRAM, pretty much no games out there are really taking great advantage of more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. So as far as the VRAM goes, we're still in great shape for the RX 580. So this is a card that right now is still a good option if you're a budget gamer looking to put together a 1080p gaming rig going for the used market you're going to get a great 1080p gaming card at a great price and it's likely going to last you a couple few years before it's really what we would call obsolete at 1080p gaming in modern AAA titles and if you're an esports player this thing is going to be great like Fortnite, Overwatch, Rocket League this card is going to be way above and beyond what you need for those games so it is a great option but I do want to hear from you guys especially those of you out there that have RX 580 and the 8 gigabyte version in particular. Are you still happy with your GPU or are you looking to upgrade in the near future? Let us know all your thoughts down below. And of course, if you like the video, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video.